Hey, what is up guys? Today we're gonna to be doing a product review video of this cooler here. Now, if you weren't aware in the last few years, high performance coolers has kind of become a thing. And uh, ever since Yeti introduced their initial line of high performance coolers, there have been a lot of new players in the market, including this company here, Sportnir. Uh, Sportnir sent me this sample to test and they've also sent me chairs in the past, uh, but this is the first time they've actually something that I'm like super excited for and something that I could use, not only in fishing, but in camping and anything outdoors related. Now, what makes a high performance cooler typically if you can have a cooler that promises uh, keeping ice cold for a minimum of four to five days is kind of you know uh, what differentiates a newer cooler versus your older uh, you know igloos and uh, Coleman's that your dad used to bring on camping trips so they sent me this sample here let's look at it and uh, let's see how high performance it is compared to the other manufacturers on the market today the Sportnir 25 quart cooler actually goes by that name. It doesn't have an official name, but if you look on Amazon, it actually is the Sportnir 25 quart cooler. The Sportnir 25 quart cooler consists of really two pieces, the lid and the base. Each piece seems to be uh, one single molded piece of plastic. I assume it's filled with foam for insulation. The handle attaches to the body in a pretty interesting way. On either side of the cooler, there's a plastic block that forces the handle to go in three different settings, forward, straight up and down, or back. As far as the plastic molding on the body, there really is no over molding. Everything is nice, clean, and professionally done. The lid does have two cup holders that have nice drainage ports, including a nice uh, ruler built into the molding of the lid. It stopped at 17 inches for California's sake. I kind of wish it ended at 18 because as we all know, a keeper striper in California is 18 inches. The lid attaches to the body via a molded in hinge design, which I really, really like. On older igloos and craftsmen, oftentimes those are the failure points. If you dropped one or if you left it in the sun too long, those little plastic hinges would often break and your lid would no longer be connected to the body. Not with this. This lid will always be connected to the body and it's held together with a steel pin that's riveted on either end. The lid features two twin T rubber straps. Now, the longevity of a cooler often depends on how well the straps or the clamp mechanism is designed. Now, with Igloos and Coleman's, I know you can buy replacement ones readily on the market. These look like they're designed to last forever, but in the um, eventuality that the rubber fails, you're gonna have to contact the company for replacements or find them in the aftermarket. Good luck with that, um, but there might be enough you know, competition out there and uh, success with this style cooler that these replacement T-handles become uh, the norm in the aftermarket. Now the lid molding has a built-in tab that complements the mating tab built into the body. Each tab has a hole and sandwiches a stainless steel plate that allows for a secure lock if you wanna lock the cooler shut, just to keep the kids out or prying eyes from your prized possessions inside. The cooler features a pretty heavy duty drainage plug and it's attached to an old bathtub style chain. Now I'm gonna remove this chain because I know from experience when you're transporting coolers on a boat, not only is there a lot of motion, I just wanna minimize the amount of rattling and thrashing that this chain would put on the body. But also if you're fishing in a lot of saltwater environments, this chain is gonna rust instantly. Now, one of the nice things about this cooler that really separates it from a lot of high performance coolers out there is that it has a built in analog thermometer. Now, I thought it was kind of gimmicky at first, but this is proving to be pretty useful and pretty accurate. Right now, it says it's about 85 degrees and it's exactly 85 degrees outside today. And when I put ice in this for the first time, it dropped down to about 35 to 40 degrees. Now, that's really helpful if you're storing meats for long durations of time. Not only do you want to be aware of how cold your meat is being kept, but you want to keep an eye on how the ice is doing without constantly opening and closing the lid. Every time you open and close the lid, you're introducing hot air into the body of the cooler and you don't want that. So you've heard all the pros and everything good I have to say about the Sportner 25 quart cooler, but what about the cons? I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching just to find out what I don't like about this product. Now, I think really it's a well-designed, well-built cooler, but it does suffer from the same cons that you know high-performance coolers all share on the market today. Number one, the biggest con is how heavy it is. It weighs 13 pounds empty. So imagine that before you even add ice, uh, waters, your beverages, your favorite catches, this this thing already weighs 13 pounds. So you're not gonna take it backpacking. You're probably not gonna take it mountaineering. You're not gonna be able to wheel it down to your favorite beach or your favorite park because it doesn't have wheels. So you're gonna be you know, carrying this or throwing it in your wagon. So I think you know, because it's so well insulated and the body and the lid are such thick plastic, it really does weigh a ton. So if you do use it, 
make sure you fill it up and don't plan on moving it because it's gonna weigh a lot. And another minimal thing, you know, just one thing to be aware of when you're getting into these higher performance coolers, because they're so thick and because they're so well insulated, capacity is at a minimum yeah i mean you can fit i think up to 25 or 30 cans of soda in here but you know for coolers that have this footprint and uh, these dimensions this has like maybe 75 to 80 percent of what those you know lesser known and you know weaker insulated coolers actually have so you know you're paying for the insulation value that you get with this high performance cooler in weight and in minimal capacity and I bet you're wondering, how does this compare to other popular style coolers on the market today? Well, as far as price, it's pretty competitive. This cooler costs, can you guess? $129. Yeah, $129 sounds like a lot for a cooler, but consider this, a comparable Yeti or K2 easily costs two to maybe even three times the amount for the same size cooler. This soft Yeti tote bag only costs $279, but it's on sale. $225 is the cheapest I could find it. This larger Igloo, my original Igloo cooler, the 70 quart, only cost retail maybe $40, $50 uh, on Amazon, Target, Walmart, someplace like that. So a lot cheaper, but you're not paying for the uh, you know kind of cooling um, that this cooler provides. I think these are rated for two to three days. These are rated for like five to six, maybe even seven. I don't know how long these are rated for, but you know what? Like my mom says, talk is cheap. You can go by what the Amazon description is gonna tell you, but you really don't know what you're in for unless you test it out. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to fill each of these coolers with the same size water bottle. Oh, and uh, before we do this, this is kind of the critical part of the video. I want you to know I'm not being paid to uh, advertise or promote this cooler other than the form of this free sample. They sent it to me, I use it for a little bit, and they said, hey, can you make a video for us and let us know what you truly think? And that's what we're doing today. I've actually never tested any of these coolers in this way before, but I'm curious to see how each cooler does with the same amount of ice in each one. So we're gonna go ahead and put uh, our two bottles in this Yeti soft tote. Again, this Yeti soft tote costs about $230 on sale today. This Igloo, it's about 30 years old. It, the only really, the only thing that I've ever replaced are the hinges and the locking tab here. Otherwise, this thing comes with me everywhere. I'm going to put three bottles in there. And we'll go ahead and lock that up. They did Yeti's locked up. And last but not least, we're going to put our two bottles in the Sport Near Cooler. And we're gonna see how that does compared to the name brand coolers uh, that I have on either side of me. So we're gonna make sure we're gonna muscle these tabs down. Today is June 5th, okay? June 5th, hopefully that's coming through June Fifth. And I'm going to leave these coolers right here. We're in kind of a shaded area, and uh, this is a perfect replication of real world conditions. Oftentimes, when you take a cooler camp in, you're in and out of the sun, so we're going to leave it just like that. So it's June 5th, 1 30 p.m. And I'll see you guys June 7th around the same time, and we'll see how this cooler does compared to these two. See you later. Three days later. It was actually 72 hours life. It is 10 23 a.m. Uh, Saturday, June 8th. And I promise I haven't messed with them. I'm really curious to see which cooler retained the most amount of ice in the water bottles. Again, we had two bottles in this one, two bottles in this one, and three in this one because it's three times bigger than these two. So let's check the Yeti first. Again, the $279 soft tote Yeti. Opening up that seal. Let's see what's inside. Oh, completely melted. No ice was retained in these bottles, all water. Now let's go to the 30 year old Igloo. Again, $50 or so on Amazon, Walmart, completely melted. Actually, these water bottles are a little uh, less, uh, there's less condensation on the outside and they're warmer to the touch 
actually than uh, that Yeti. So props to Yeti for keeping these a little cooler. So physically, these are cooler water bottles than these. Now to the start of the show, the Sport Near 25 quart cooler. Again, uh, I think $130, $129 on Amazon. Now I did check on the uh, status of these coolers on the outside, just wanted to make sure they were still there, not stolen. I did look at the thermometer here and it did say that the interior was at around like 42 degrees uh, yesterday. Right now it's at like 55 or so. So the ambient temperature outside is about 70. So I think of all these two, uh, there might be a chance that ice was retained in the water bottles in this one. And uh, unlike these two, this one has a thermometer so I could actually gauge from the outside without opening it um, if there was ice and you know the, what the inside temperature was. So let's pop it open. Really curious to see if the 72 hour test was worth it. Let's open it up. Oh, you hear that? So I just broke the seal, that rubber seal uh, that the lid and the body make uh, when you tighten it down. So, oh, check that out. There's a chunk of ice in here. Sweet. Wow, look at this one. This one has a lot of ice in there. I just wanna show you guys that there's actually a big chunk of ice in there and in this one too, this one is smaller. So it's funny, so this one was the bottle that was kind of on the bottom. This one was kind of on top. So notice the difference in how much ice there is on the bottom one versus the top. As we all know, hot air rises and cold air sinks. So this one definitely was in the colder layer of um, the air in this cooler. I, I'm actually pretty shocked. I really didn't know what to expect. And I'm kind of glad that we did the full 72 hours instead of 48 because we really got a chance to see uh, how much water or how much ice completely disappeared from the Coleman cooler, how much ice disappeared from the Yeti, and how much ice was retained in the bottles for the Sportnir. So, man, you know, that was pretty cool. I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're only paying $129 for this cooler versus like $300 for a comparable um, hard Yeti. And uh, man, that was pretty cool. Hopefully you guys found this video informative and useful. And uh, you know, Yeti, you can buy name brand. Igloo, you can go with what you know. Sportnir, I think they did a pretty good job of making their version of an extreme uh, cold retention kind of high performance cooler uh, in the form of this one. So. If you're interested, as always, in all my product reviews, link in the description below. If you want to buy uh, this particular one, go through that link and uh, any purchase made through that associate link directly support content like this. Again, this isn't a paid advertisement, otherwise, uh, you know, other than the form of this free sample that they sent me. And uh, after the 72 hour test, you know what? I'm pretty convinced that this thing works. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.